Welcome to Round Hill Radio, the podcast from Round Hill Community Church. Through our conversations, we discover the holy in the ordinary, find moments of grace and peace, and redefine what we're talking about when we talk about faith. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Leslie. I'm always tempted in that introduction to go, what are we talking about when we talk about <laughs> <laughs> Is that a little too, make it a little too personal, probably. And then you can give, during those five seconds, I can think of it. Yeah, I go. <laughs> Something. Better you than me. <laughs> or, or figure out a way to turn it back to you. <laughs> so we wanted to spend today uh, exploring Lent, which begins tomorrow. Yes. Which is wild. Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. Um, which you have to pronounce very slowly and carefully, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. That one and Maundy Thursday. Mm-hmm. I worked with, I've worked with a few colleagues that say Monday Thursday. Oh, yes. And I've learned, I've, I just add it to my list of pet peeves. <laughs> <laughs> but Ash. Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday, uh, where you come and get your ashes. Yes. Um, would you quickly yes. be willing to explain what's the deal with the ashes because um my uh in-laws are of greek heritage Mm -hmm. they do not do the ashes Mm. it turns out which was news to me so i attempted to explain it and made quite a mess of it so (laughs) you'd be doing me a favor maybe we can help you i would love it we'll see would you mind well you know so this drives home the point you know that when people think about a faith like Islam, Judaism, Christianity. One of the questions to ask is, which Christianity are you talking about? For sure. Right. Right. So that it is, these faiths are complex. Yes. Right? Multifaceted. So some traditions that are practiced ferociously in one tradition are unknown in others. Right. And I think that's part of the interest of it. Right? For we sure. Get, and we, we have a lot to learn from each other. Yes. But you know, Ash Wednesday... Uh, of course, marks the beginning of the 40-day period of Lent. Lent comes from an old English word, lengthen, to lengthen. It's the lengthening of days hey. as you get into the springtime. But it's also meant to talk about the growth and stretching of the spirit and all the practices and disciplines that we can do during Lent, either by giving something up or taking on something new, are about that. Yes. Ash Wednesday, uh, by the way, the ashes in many traditions come from the burning of the palms that have been used in Palm Sunday the year prior. So those are gathered, burned, fine ash, and those are used, right, for the ashes. And um, the the core theme or phrase that that occurs at the heart of the Ash Wednesday service is this line, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. So ashes are a reminder of mortality. Mm -hmm. And when you're marked with the ashes on Ash Wednesday, it's usually in the sign of the cross, which is both a reminder of our mortality, but also a promise of resurrection life, Mm. right? In that image of the cross. So it's the the thing I like about it, by the way, I love to work in charcoal. So putting ashes on on people's heads. Oh, it's you're in heaven. (laughs) It's your best day. I never thought of that. Better than that. That's amazing. (laughs) I love that. Maybe one year I'm just going to take a big, huge honking charcoal (laughs) stick and bring that out. That's amazing. It makes puts me in mind. We always like, share, uh, um, especially in years past, we share the meme with um, the different crosses of, yes. with like different funny. So there's like a normal cross, and then there's like the well, starting to run out of ashes. So you only get the vertical a faint, and they're yeah, they're very funny. Yeah. I'm sure we'll look for. I'm sure I'll post that on our social media next this week. So when, when pastors <laughs> usually administer the ashes for the first time, you can tell because it's a cross that looks like it really was done in jet black magic marker and <laughs> yeah. that it's never washing off. And you get the little flakes on your nose. And you get fl- <coughs> flakes all over your nose. Absolutely. <laughs> so it, it's one of the, it's probably the earthiest thing that we do. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but you know, this is, this is another image obviously drawn from another tradition, you know, but the Phoenix rises out of its ashes. Sure. Right. So the sense is that we have this earthy custom ritual tradition, which reminds us of our mortality, points to the promise of everlasting life. And, uh, and it's something that we, we do together. We come forward together as a community to say, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. And yet there's more life. It's so, it's so interesting. So 
I, in, in thinking about our Ash Wednesday service this year, I had kind of a weird idea. You had a great idea. Thanks. It was originally weird, and now I think it's cool. Um, which is, so there's a piece of music I have played for, oh, I'm going to date myself. Uh, math. 18 years now. Okay. Yep. That sounds about right. We'll call it 17, 18 years. So um, in... In 1957, <laughs> I was wow. not around then. Hey, uh, in me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on December 8th, 1957, um, Marcel Dupre. Now, if you remember our, uh, oh, if, if you go back and watch our live stream where we, we made it an, uh, an imaginary dinner party, which was a fun live stream. Yeah. Who would you invite? Who would you invite? And I talked about Jean de Monsieur. Yeah. And then who's an organist uh, in France, in Paris, in the 70s. I told us, mentioned her teacher, Marcel Dupre. Mm -hmm. Now, Marcel Dupre was the organist at Saint Sulpice, which is, if you're an organ nerd, you will know as probably considered the best organ in Paris. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Not Notre Dame. I'm sorry. It's just not. Ouch. Um, <laughs> they're, they're sister organs, but Saint Sulpice is a better. It's a better space. Notre Dame is amazing. I was brought to tears when I was there that one time. Like, it, you know, it's a, it's a stunning space. Um, but Sans piece instrumentally, the Cavalier Col there is just incredible. Anyways, I digress. Marcel Dupre was organist there. He was also a uh, professor of organ and improvisation hmm. at the Paris Conservatoire. Now, any organist worth their salt who was living in France went to this school. Mm -hmm. It was the, the Juilliard, if you will, mm -hmm. of... Of France, it was the school everybody knew, and it was the oh, you went there mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Juilliard is not a huge school for organ right now. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> sorry, Paul. Um, anywho, so he followed uh, Charles Marie Vidor actually, and so actually in the 20th century, there were only two professors of organ. <laughs> Wow. Um, Talk about longevity. Not this, yeah, yeah. So it was literally in 100 years, there were two professors of organ at the Paris Conservatory. So if you heard there, the he was the professor of organ and improvisation. So that speaks to the culture of being an organist mm -hmm. at that time. And really, historically, um, there has always been a huge, long tradition of being an Im improviser in the organ. Now, normally we think of jazz, we think of improvisation. Right. Uh -huh. Organists have been improvising forever. Uh -huh. This is actually a really very common practice that's actually been more lost um, in recent years. A lot of people are working to revive it, but it's just not, it's not like a thing everyone does in the same way that it used to be. Um, actually, fun fact that the um, Takata and Fugue in D that everyone thinks about at Halloween, the story behind that or the legend is that that was Bach sitting down at a new organ and testing out the different sounds, mm. which is why it's sort of like little sections. Because okay. he was like, trying a little thing, changing sounds, trying a little thing, changing sounds. And it huh. became that piece we all love to hate <laughs> if you're an organist. So I returned back to 1957. So December 8th, 1957, um, Marcel Dupre was playing for the dedication of the organ at... Uh, I believe it's Invalides. I can't, my French is not awesome. Um, it is also the location of Napoleon's tomb. Okay. Um, and there was a new organ being put in. So they were dedicating it. So they have, you know, it's like a big celebration concert, right? Mm -hmm. So, or a service in this instance, it was a Catholic church. So the way they did this was they had the celebrant, who was his priest, mm -hmm. chant different intonations, um, which were basically instructions hmm. to the organist. Hmm. And it said, uh, for example, organ, you will proclaim the steadfast nature of God. Oh, interesting. And so Marcel, it was in Latin. Uh -huh. And then Marcel Dupre's job was then to make the organ sound like this idea, this concept. So he's concept. responding to this. So he's responding and to this. this is a, kind of a live dialogue in a sense. This is a live dialogue. I'm sure he knew ahead of time and he had some thoughts. Right, right. Um, and you'll actually see. So the funny thing was by this time, Marcel Dupre was a little bit older. And he 
had, he was kind of in his very like atonal phase. But the funny thing is these, these improvisations are very accessible. Mm -hmm. They're very friendly. There's a few funny moments as you can actually see him weaving in some to like some little tunes and melodies mm -hmm. from his other works, which mm -hmm. is like a fun little Easter egg hunt. Um, so there's 11, they call them versets, mm -hmm. versets, um, which looks like a typo if you read too fast, but there is a T in there. Um, and so each one, so there, you know, one is you will sing the song of the angels. Okay. Um, you will, you will, you will sing of the Holy, of huh. Holy Mary. I love this interactive quality. It's super cool. So in 2004, the transcriber David Stetch. So this, so this was a recorded concert. Okay. And it had, it had been printed. It hasn't been, it's been out of print for forever. Wow. David Stutch got his hands on the LP and transcribed it. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Um, and it was published in 2004, which is where I got my grubby little hands on it in 2004. And my teacher, I think, was busy. And he was like, I don't have time to learn this here. You learn this. He's like, I want to do this. This is really cool. This is a new thing that just came out. Here, you learn it. And I was like, okay. It's a freshman in college. You do whatever your exactly. professor tells you to do. Yep. Um, and it's been my best friend. How fascinating. For the next 18 years, basically. Um, there's a theory that maybe I was the first one to play it live. I don't know, but it's fun to say out Why loud. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Because I think David gave the copy to my teacher. He was mm. like, here, Todd, here's this new thing I just finished. Wow. Um, it's an incredible piece of work. It's each mo each first set is like two and a quarter minutes. Mm -hmm. They're short. I use them in worship all the time. You're going to recognize about half of them because okay. I use them all the time um, because they're just so f like, you know, some you can use as preludes, some you can use as postludes. There's a toccata at the end. Um, so our incredible soprano, uh, Risa yeah. Harmon, is going to be our... Uh, celebrant in uh, this way uh -huh. on Ash Wednesday, she is going to chant each verse, each in intonation, and then I will uh, play the corresponding movement. Can't wait! It's really fun, and then so that's going to be kind of the the construct, if you will, for our Ash Wednesday service. So it's going to provide time for meditation, and I think it it's kind of like sound poems for the nature of of God and faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and even though it's not specifically like Ash Wednesday, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's kind of more universal than that. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it, my weird idea turned out to kind of work. I think, I think it's going to be really cool. I'm very excited about it. I love this piece of music. I play it. I play it in concert probably once every three or four years. And I play it in worship all the time. Well, I think it, we're, you're helping us to keep alive that spirit of interaction because you're taking this construct of this music and we're putting it into interaction with the Ash Wednesday service. Right. Right. To see how that looks and feels. I wish I knew. <laughs> and I wonder, it, there must be like a program archived mm. somewhere at mm. Invalid of actually what, how they took that music. That into would be the wonderful service. to see. Because I don't think it was all the, I don't think they did it straight through. Okay. I've done it in concert straight through and it works. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for it to just be kind of like these little moments and how one thing will shape and interact with what you're doing in prayer and scripture and other liturgy you're bringing into worship. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm super excited. I think it's gonna be really fun. It's also, um, I wrote in my program, in my program notes, <laughs> I wrote the longest program notes for this thing, um, that the interesting challenge for it is because I do not have a um, brand new Cavier Cole organ, which is like a Rolls Royce, if you will, mm. um, to play on. No offense to our wonderful organ. It is not a Rolls Royce. It's, bless its heart. Bless its heart. But that's the challenge of any any concert or any piece of music ever, basically, is adapting it to the instrument. Sure. So that's that's its own its own challenge, especially movements I haven't played before here. And it was funny because I was playing one of the movements the other day, and I was like, "How have I not played this whole piece here before?" Huh. And I realized I've never actually played a concert here before on the organ, <laughs> which is its own <laughs> can of worms. Um, but I thought that I was like, "We should do that." I was like, "When can I do that?" We could do it for Ash Wednesday. 
great it's idea. It's one of those moments of creativity and imagination coming together, an opportunity. And so it'll be available. Obviously, uh, it'll be our in-person service, but it'll also be available, available online. Yes, I do need to record it. You do need to record <laughs> it. And then everyone will be able to enjoy everyone it. Everyone will be able to enjoy it. So that will be, um, right. yes. Yeah, so if you are a long-distance member of our community, that will be available tomorrow evening. If you're listening to this podcast, the day it comes out, um, it will be available probably mid-afternoon on Wednesday, March 2nd. That's great. Um, if you're listening past that point, uh, go check out our YouTube channel, Roundtill Media, because it's hanging out there. Always. Always. Yeah. I figured I would wait till the sun sets to record it and kind of record it with some ambiance. Yes. Maybe get some fun lighting happening or something. Love it. I'll try. I'll make it cool. It's <laughs> the goal. At you least. will indeed. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. I, ha- I obviously we're recording this ahead of time, so I haven't figured it out yet. Between uh-huh. now and when you watch it, hopefully I'll have figured out something fun. We trust you. Thank you. I appreciate. It. Maybe I'll bring some studio lights and do some fun colors or something. Sure. That sounds fun. <laughs> this is me plan- thinking out loud. <laughs> so I think. I think that's it. I think we actually have to go to a staff I meeting. Think we're good. So I think we're gonna. So we uh, are just so grateful for you all watching and listening. Roundhill Radio. Roundhill Radio is brought to you by the friends and members of Roundhill Community Church, and we will see you back here next week. 